What's going on, everybody? It is T90 Official, and welcome, welcome, welcome to one of the best migration 1v1s of all time. Now, I want to say before we get into this Age of Empires 2 game that I've actually never seen it. The only reason I know that this is one of the best migration games of all time is because Tato said that to me during the Tato Challenge, which you may or may not have seen on YouTube yet. Uh, I am currently away from streaming and whatnot, so I have a lot of videos planned for YouTube, and I don't know right now exactly how I have it pan panned out on the schedule. So uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen the Tato Challenge yet, you'll probably see that within a few days. But long story short, Tato said to me, because <clears throat> he played these games the other day, he said, T90, if you haven't seen that game, you need to cast it. It's one of the best migration games ever. So we have Tato in the blue. Tato is well known as one of the best players in the world. And then in the red, we have Aramis. And Aramis, he's not well known as one of the best players in the world. However, Tato said that he's one of the best water players in the world. And there are a few guys who I want to give shout outs to who play on Voobly. Well, two specifically. We have Aramis. He plays a lot of water maps. And then we have a guy named uh, Rui Lopez, I believe. And all the guy hosts, he's a Brazilian, and all he tends to host is migration. So there are a few people who like certain maps. And they play them a lot, and then they, they become very good at it, obviously. And apparently this game, Tato is going to be rivaled. Now this game was in a best of five, which was in a tournament called King of Migration, which Tato played. So this was the, the final of a best of five in King of Migration. So anyway, we got that out of the way. Let's talk about Migration exactly what it is. So on Migration, you start on a starting island. And the starting island has no boards. So as you can see, players are pushing in deer, which takes a decent skill level to do. Also, you will then see fishing ships, and players will, will probably go heavy on fish. Now you have gold, you have stone, you even have berries if you need that on your starting island. But eventually you're going to need to get to this island, where there's more gold, there's more food, there's more wood. If you don't do that, you'll sometimes struggle. Now, I haven't really seen... A lot of migration 1v1s uh, with the current meta. In the old meta, there was no fire galleys, so players would tend to go with galleys, and because galleys were a bit weaker in early feudal, players would, would go for two docks, they would add a lot of fishing ships, and those fishing ships would eventually take them to a strong castle age. So I imagine we're going to see something similar here. You know, Italians is the pick for Aramis, and uh, he... We're just talking to each other there. Uh, he he has what is known as the best water sieve in the game for 1v1 islands. Reason for that is that Italians, if you look at their tech tree for a moment, their fishing ships cost 15% less, and their dock techs cost 50% less, and advancing to the next stage is 15% less. So there's 50%, there's 2 percent there's, there's two fifteen percent discounts there that all apply towards water. Italians, though, they might not be as strong as Vikings. The Vikings, they don't get the Fire Galley, which is why there's a lot of conversation about them now not being the best civilization. But, you know, you can go straight into galleys or, or straight into longboats maybe as Vikings if you just have the time. And on Migration, it's going to take players a long distance to travel to get to the other player. So possibly Tato will have the time. So that's pretty much the extent of what we're going to see here in this game. You know, Age of Empires 2 is beautiful because I have time to talk about everything that we might see. It's obvious to me that Tata will go for either straight galleys or straight uh, longboats. I'm kind of hoping he goes longboats because I find longboats really fun. But um, yeah, we'll find out. And uh, in the meantime, you know, I haven't really left for my trip yet, but... I can tell you guys, I miss the streams. <laughs> uh, I miss the streams. I know many of you guys might not watch my live streams or anything. Uh, many of you might not have stopped by yet. Um, but I do cast a lot of Age of Empires 2 while live on Twitch. And that, that link can still be found in the video description. And, you know, I love what I do so much that my my vacation, while it will be fun, uh, will be filled with regret well, for, for being away. Like... I guess that means that I found something I truly enjoy when I, I'm off work and I miss it, you know? So, I decided to cast a lot of things for YouTube while I was gone. 
make sure that you guys could have some new and fresh content and not just, well, what might be reruns from Twitch streams. And so this is apparently going to be an awesome game. I'm really excited for it because Tato has never told me that before. Tato has never said T90. This game is something you need to cast. So we'll see. Currently, comparing the player situations, you can see that Tato has one more villager. Probably because of some idle time that Red had. But Red has two more fishing ships. So, you know, the fishing ship discount certainly paying off now for Red. He can afford so much more because of the discount. And we actually have three docks now for Red. So again, fish booming is common on a map like this. And I think because of this, Tato will probably just go for what will be a faster castle age into the longboats, which is one of my favorite unique units in the game. Most unique units are created out of castles. Uh, however, in the case of longboats, in the case of turtle ships from Koreans, there are unique units that can be created from docks. And while we do see longboats, longboats more often now, we do not see too many turtle ships still, unfortunately. We won't see that this game, obviously. I think on land, both ships are very similar here. Uh, if you compare their land options, I think the one difference is that the unique unit is maybe a bit more viable for Vikings. The Genoese crossbow for red, uh, that, that counters cav. So it counters knights, that counters cavalier, paladin, camels, and that's not something that Vikings would ever go. So I think Genoese crossbow are a bit useless for Italians, but Italians do have their, their pavise, their pavise unique tech, which gives their regular archers more pierce armor, which actually make their archers stronger than Viking archers. Vikings have a very strong economy, though, with the free wheelbarrow when they hit feudal age and the free handcart when they hit castle age. So Tata will have that. Tata will also have the berserks to maybe counter the condos. Those condo tierros is something we see frequently from the Italians. But then again, condos, you know, they're another counter to, to gunpowder. Gunpowder is something that Vikings don't have. So I, I think that Vikings, they do a great way, great job at neutralizing the threats that Italians pose. Uh, on land. On water, we'll see because the Italian discount is pretty insane. Atato is on his way to Castle Age. He's making more docks and Tato will be getting his upgrades to go for those longboats. So I'm getting what I want to see. Red is later than Tato to the Castle Age. He has transported already though. So he's transported to the mainland with one villager. Actually really like this move. See, he's, he's docked here simply because there's more fish. So Tata will need to do that as well because these deep fish will run out. And he, he's actually at a disadvantage with that unless he docks way down here or way up here. Tato was considering, I, I think he sent a fishing ship this way to scout, maybe. And speaking of scouting, the scout for Red is now on the mainland. So Red knows how important the golds are. He assumes Tato's on the other side and he sees this gold. And so if he were to protect this somehow, Tato would be kind of starved of gold, actually. Look at this. There's just two golds here for Tato. Wow, you know what? This is pretty insane. I'm not familiar with how many resources should be on the mainland. But we have one stone here. Uh, there's got to be another one somewhere, right? Oh, there's another one. So there's two main stones and two main golds, and the golds are in this spot. Red is a guy who who plays this map frequently, so he will see that and maybe try and try and take advantage of the, that situation. Tato is making the longboats. He also got the gillnets upgrade, which improves the fishing rate of his fishing ships. Wow, he's just killed the sheep, the animal. <laughs> I don't know why he did that, actually. He could have just stolen the sheep and used that as a scout. It's not something I totally agree with. Like, this sheep he could be using to scout a little bit. Red is now getting War Galley, which will turn his Fire Galleys into Fire Ships. And you'll notice that he has quite a few resources in the bank. Quite a few resources. He also has a monastery. He, the university is just completed, so he might go for a 1TC Imperial Age. All the extra fishing ships helping him out. He has eight more fishing ships in Tato at the moment. And yes, he's clicked up to the Imperial Age. So really interesting. His villager is also going to survive here. 
Tato really can't fight the, fi the fire ship. So look at that Imperial Age time. It will be a 21 minute and 40 second Imperial Age time for Red. I'm going to call you, call him our challenger here. Because I think it's safe to say that he's challenging a, a better player. Though I believe this was game one of their best of five, so. And none of them are reigning champions. But you guys, you guys get what I'm, I'm going for, I think. So Tata will probably now go to the mainland and start adding town centers. That's what I assume. A lot of emphasis on water control in this map because water can... Well, if you don't have water control, you lose everything on the starting, te starting island and you're probably dead then. Then, of course, if you'd like to transport to get to the mainland, you need to have some form of water control. This is quite a few longboats from Tato. Uh, Red did get careening, which is the, the fire ship armor. And Red is just waiting for fast fire ship, so he doesn't really want to be fighting now, but these fights aren't awful for him. Lowering the HP on Tato's ships. Now Red has looped around with a few fire ships. This is a sneaky move. He hasn't found any fishing ship pickoffs as far as I know. That's what he's looking for. So he won't get that there. And I, I do think that I do think that Red will get what he wants here. Let's look at his resources. Yeah, he has enough to research fast fire ship, and Tato's kind of getting wedged in here. The question is, has Tato gone too far? It kind of feels like it. I doubt he was expecting this strategy from Red. And Tato said this is the best migration game he's ever seen. Obviously, he might be a bit biased because he played in it, but... Fast fire ship is on the way, and there's really no way that Tato can fight this. With this amount of longboats now versus the fire ships. Fire ships are better in lower numbers, and Tato knows that, so he's running away. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but on the right of your screen, you can see the techs that are being researched. And I I'm seeing infantry upgrades, infantry defense upgrades, which tells me that we will see Kondo Tieros created. Now, now, Red has just sent villagers here, and I think he's just now realized Tato's building a TC. And let's see if Tato can get this up. I think Tato needs a wall in his village, and he does wall in his villager. That's huge. Simply because, well, if he didn't wall up the vill, the TC gets denied. But Red, you know, he, he will make more fire ships. Look how many fire ships he has. He has 14 of them, and they're fast fire ships. And he'll be pushing Tato here. And also, I'd like to see him build barracks. I think he's going to go here, which is where the golds are. Okay. And if he builds the barracks, he will just swarm the mainlands with some condo tieros. So I think the score might not show it, but I do think Tato is kind of behind now. He doesn't have a big vill lead. In fact, he doesn't have a vill lead at all. He has a slight fishing ship lead. But Red is currently in the Imperial Age and can make Kondo Tieros. Oh, and also Tato's TC got denied at 99%. You know what? I just assumed that that would have never happened. I saw Red was attacking the Palisade Wall. That's that's a little bit of luck you need versus a guy like Tato. Look at that. That whole TC denied. Just a nightmare for Tato. Though I will say Tato is finally on the way to the Imperial Age himself. Now with this many longboats, I believe he can... Kill a fire ship with three volleys. Which is not a lot. <laughs> which is not a lot. He's using the fishing ship as a distraction. Yeah, it seems three volleys. And and so Tata will have to hit and run, which means that his fishing ships will have to just run. And they won't really be able to fish and run. Now he's getting war galley. I just wonder if Tato will... We'll go for demos, and yes, it'll be demos and longboats. So Work Alley will change the demo rafts into demo ships. And demo ships are the counter. That's what the water triangle is supposed to bring us in Age of Empires 2. You have the, the fast fires versus any galleys. You have the demos then versus the fast fires. And I personally think the strongest composition is to go with a ranged unit like the longboats and then have the demos in front. But Red... Oh! Are you kidding me? Red is transported here! So so Red's playing one of the best players in the world in a tournament final, and he transports... This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. He transports here. Now, if he builds one barracks, Tato's going to be in trouble. 
And I think that barracks will go up. So Tata's economy, look at this, Tata's building more TCs. He knows he could be in trouble. As far as I know, Tato doesn't have any mainland's control. And Tato does have the, the longboats coming over, and the longboats can range the, the condo tiers. It's also worth pointing out that it's not like Red has a lot of economy to, to make the condos, because he only has 13 fishing ships now, and they cost food. However, this is amazing harassment from him. He has more villagers than Tato. Tato is actually just now getting loom. Tato has been forced into building town centers on this starting little island. I believe he's going to send a vill over there to finish that TC. We'll see if that will be completed. Wow. So Tato's at 75 population. Red is at 100 population. You just saw that demo or heard that demo go off. And Tato will kill that fire ship. Tato gets a conversion on the condo Tiro. Uh, he can actually get another one if he pays attention here. I think he'll get that, actually, and if he gets it... You've got to be kidding me. Okay, he gets the conversion. He could possibly kill these Vils? He's actually just walled them in there. So that was intentional from him. He, he walls in the villagers so they can't build more barracks. Wow, what scenes here? Tato has 20 idle villagers. And that's 20 idols out of the 47. I do think that Red's control here will just stop. Because Tato has so many longboats now. He'll shred that barracks. This one can just be walled in, actually, if Tato thinks of it. And it looks like he is. Now, crucially, Tato finishes this town center. Funny enough, he doesn't really have food income to create more vills there. So he need to wait. I think that the... Well, I don't know what to think, really. Um, possibly, the best move for Tato would be to go into Arbalest on land. Simply because he's currently creating navy, which costs wood and gold. So I think you, you want to go into something which has the same cost. Because his economy is just not set up to make champions. And I, I think that red was a good example of, of just how economies work. Because his condos were pretty expensive for him to go into and he couldn't spam them like you can in other instances but he is ahead tato or red is ahead tato is a 76 population it is 113 for red i just wonder how much how stressed red is at the moment because obviously he's doing very very well versus a player like tato I would be really stressed, and in the Tato Challenge, Tato and I actually play some games together. Now, Aramis and I are around equal rate when it comes to, like, the Age of Empires rating, but he, like, I would just be garbage <laughs> at these settings. Like, this is his specialty. So, if anything, he might be like a 2k2, 2k3 rated migration player. As you can see, he, he notices Tato's finish the TC. And so he wants to stop that. Tato's going for heavy demos, and he's just really far behind right now. Like, he is just completely swarmed by these fire ships. And the longboats, when not elite, they, they barely scratch the fire ships. It's pretty insane. So Tato, <laughs> he's going to convert the villagers. Well, he needs them, because he's 20 behind, so that'll help. And he's going for demos. He's hoping the demo ships will bail him out. And he does have another demo coming out of this dock, and there's a few fire ships here clumped up. This is what demos specialize in. They're heavy demos now. Let's see what Tato can do. And a big explosion! Wow, that was a huge demo ship. The audio always bugs. Well, not always, but sometimes bugs out. So we heard that the explosion happened just a bit too early. So maybe now Red... Does he consider switching away from the fire ships? It does come down to what his economy can afford to do. He's just built a castle here. And I think now he can just hold Tato on water and prioritize land. I'm not really sure how Tato's going to come back, but because he sent me the game, I imagine there's a way back into this. I just don't know how. I just don't see it right now. How can Tato come back in this game? He's taking good engagements on water now. He does have more military. 
The power of the longboats, my friends. The power of the longboats. He doesn't know about these two golds. His villagers here will need to run away. Uh, not sure if he'll be able to do anything with them. Red is now getting fletching, and he's getting galleons. So I think he realizes that's a lot of longboats. So he has to go into galleons. Now, if we're comparing elite longboats versus galleons, the elite longboats would be better for Tato. But they're not elite yet, and the tech for elite is... I'm really bad with the tech tree, so this is embarrassing. There should be... This is really embarrassing. I'm Thank God I'm not streaming this, because if I was streaming this, everyone would be like, Oh, T90 can't use the tech tree. I apologize. Okay, let's let's just... I'm going to have to edit that out. We'll just edit that out of the video. Um, I believe it's like a thousand food, 800 gold to research elite longboat. I was looking to see the cost, and I can't use the tech tree for my life. So, um, yeah, I just try and memorize things, so hopefully I'm close. <laughs> The point is, is that Tato does not have the resources yet, okay? Calm down, chat. <laughs> calm down, comments. Calm down, comments. The Tato's villagers actually escape. And you know, Red has 89 villagers. Tato's at 83 now. Not bad. Red has a lot of his economy on the starting islands. Both of them do. Red is docking on this side to pressure with galleons and to pressure with fires. So if most of the economy is on the starting islands, winning water and taking control of that could win you the game. So perhaps that's the way for Tato to stay alive here, just win on water. Red sees him though, Red is tracking him. Oh look at this demo, look at this demo from Tato. That's gonna be huge! Wow, that's a huge demo, that's sick, that's... It's the second one now that has killed three fire ships with one explosion. And Tato nicely saves his villagers. Don't know what he'll go with yet. But well done. And another demo now incoming. And this should be another good fight for Tato. And yes, it is. So you can really tell that Red has tech switched now because... He's lost momentum. When you try and tech switch, it takes some time. And so Red is slowly losing control. Tato's catching up in population. Uh, Tato's trying to build some archery ranges, so this is kind of what I expected. Is this longboat bugged into the archery range? <laughs> yes, it is. Some poor archers are probably out there trying to train. Like, yo, Jeff, get your boat out of the training facility. That's why they don't. you don't drink and, and fletch. Okay, that was bad. That was really bad. Anyway! This woman survived. She's the only survivor. And I just jinxed it. I think she's gonna die now. Red should really prioritize getting Tato's villagers off of here. Kill her! No! Is he gonna let her live? Okay, she's dead. Guys, Red has collected four relics. Four relics. He has 40 more population now. He has a castle on this hill. So, so this, since this is recorded game, since this is not live, I actually want to analyze this a little bit more than I normally would have time to do. Tato, he can't take any golds or any woods whatsoever that's not on the mainland. And he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8-ish plus... We're going to call this 25, plus another 25, so, like, maybe 60 trees? Oh, there's more up here. I don't know, like, maybe, maybe 80, 90, 100 trees? It's still not a lot when you're making full navy. It's, it's still not going to be a lot to recede the farms. He doesn't have a lot of space. He's out of stone completely. In fact, Tato's completely out of gold. Tato is completely out of gold. He has one single relic. And now Tato's going to make a move here. So I think what Tato could do is he could sell some of that stone he has in the bank and get gold. Um, possibly if he were to build a castle here and then go into a treb war, he could kill Red's buildings and take the gold back. But Tato's behind. He's just really far behind. Red has so much map coverage. Just look at this. 
He can see virtually everything, and now he can see that Tatsu is building a castle here. I think that Red will regret not mixing in his own archers or skirmishers or something ranged that could stop this. So that castle will go up for Tato, which is good for him. Longboats are now elite, by the way. They're now elite. And Tato is building a second castle, and yes, it, they will go up because Red cannot stop them. So I just wonder if Red's commitment to water almost doesn't help him now. Here he has a few galleys. That's going to be helpful if he disrupts the fish. Or, uh, sorry, the farms from Tato. So that, that works out. Tato's only gone for conversions there. And, and that does not work. But the condos are not working. And I think Tato could maybe get some gold back. He can at least get this stone. But Red... You know, he's going to have an edge in the Treb War. He makes a Treb immediately. And Tato is as well. Tato's only gold income is coming from the one relic on his starting island. And he has lots of vital vills here. So he has to start sending batches of villagers to the mainland. I, I'm not exaggerating for hype. This is a game that Tato should not win. He, he is down in relic count. He's down in Vil count. The only thing he has a lead in is military count. But I don't see how his longboats can influence the outcome of the center all that much. The only thing that Tato's military is giving him is control of the shoreline to land like he already has done. So that's why I go for water control. So you can get here. And both players are now here. So it's going to be a real difficult task for Tato. He can't make Arbalest. He can't really make berserks. He has to go into skirmishers because of the lack of gold. Now, you, you can tell that, that Red is probably just toggling through all of his barracks and, and uh... Oh, excuse me. Spamming these Kado Tierros. I've been drinking way too much coffee lately. I've been yawning on streams and videos. I apologize. We've got to take a break from it. But yeah, yet Red's unit control isn't fantastic. But he's in a position where he can afford to throw away a few units. As long as he keeps Tato held on water and pushes on land. But you know what? Tato's making a few berserks. And with a small hill advantage, he will... He's actually going to kill this trebuchet, isn't he? He does, but he, he loses one out of his two castles. And this one's almost dead. So Tato can't make Berserks if he loses his castles. Speaking of lost castles, Red will lose his. Now we'll leave Red with this one here on the hill. Kind of puts Red in a tough position now. Remember I said I think Vikings are slightly better on land. If Red goes into Arbalest, Tato has the Skirmishers. So don't really want to do that. You almost want to go into Infantry. Because Infantry will counter the Skirms and it'll hold up decently against the Berserks, but his form of infantry is going to have to be Kondo Tieros. And he's trying that, but Tato still has a castle to make Berserks, so we had a couple of the unique techs saving Tato so far this game. We've had the Berserks, we've had the Elite Longboats, and the Elite Longboats are still helping Tato secure the shoreline. Oh, and Bombard Cannon from Red. Oh, he kills both of the traps from Tato. And also, he keeps his Bombard Cannon alive. So now he has his own trebuchet coming forward. He has a Bombard Cannon here as well. I don't think Tato has a lot of stone remaining. Tato is at the limit for resources. So Tato, he can't even buy stone to repair this, guys. He could possibly kill this Bombard Cannon. It's only on 18 HP, but he has no answer to the trebuchet. And I want to say that Red's going to win the game. Like, if this castle goes down, I just don't see how Tato can ever come back. And down goes the castle. So now Tato has zero answers to the condos. Red is still keeping Tato pinned back. Tato does have a TC here. So he, he has more farming eco. He has more wood eco coming in. But... Uh, it seems like I missed Red losing his monastery here. It's actually quite a big deal. 
It's just going to be tough for Tato. Now, Red has this gold fully saturated. So he has that gold income. He has 40 more vills, and he does know that Tato's over there. It's tough. It's tough to be judgmental when a guy doesn't collect his relics like this because there's he should have the lead, right? That's what it feels like. But look, look at the stubbornness of Tato. He kills every villager that, were, that was building the barracks there. And with skirmishers, he's going to kill the Bombard Cannon. Tato could actually steal those relics. Like, he's obviously the one who killed that. He's building more archer ranges to just go full skirmisher. Pretty insane here. Like, Kondos, they're an interesting unit because you can build them instantly in the Imperial Age as Italians. They have a huge power spike. As the game goes on, though, they just get weaker and weaker. So going for something like Champion would be better for Red. But, of course... Does he really have the resources to go on the champions? No. He, he can't approach this area of Tato's economy because Tato's protecting it with the longboat. So Red will probably add more navy now. Tato's micro has just been exceptional. And I, I believe Tato can get these relics. So that means Tato, he can not only get the relics, he can get the stone and, and he could have a gold income lead actually. It's possible. Red's gold miners here would still be stronger than the four relics, but it'd be close, and Red will run out of that eventually. So Tato wants to go for Viking Lightcav. So he wants Lightcav as meat for the skirmishers. Only four pierce armor on the condos. They're not amazing versus skirms. And of course, Lightcav would help with mobility. They'd help to, to distract these condo tieros. And if Tato secures the stone, Tato could, of course, build a castle and go for the Zerks later on. Uh, this is where, if you're red, you really start to feel the pressure now. Um, he has quite a few idols on his starting island. It's so tough to, to select all these garrison, ungarrison, fight, and do all of that at once. Tato, he's obviously a better player, so he's doing a better job at that. Because all the trees are just disappearing from the... The starting islands. Great raid from Red here. Red's been doing this multiple times now. And yeah, so pikes from Red. Red thinks he can go pikemen and condo tieros, and uh, I'm not so sure. If Tatsu gets enough skirmishers, he could just one shot everything. But look how many skirms Tatsu is trying to create. He has 60 military. Look, watch this. That Kondo Tierra will, will die pretty quickly. It's not it's not bad, right? It, it's not bad. Yeah, see? Two volleys. And the light cover there is a distraction, so it's not as if Red can close in. Tacho's micro good yet again. Red accidentally weakens his one Kondo Tierra there. And Tato's now building a new CC. I imagine he will get the relics. That's why he has the, the monk there. Monk will help with the conversion for now. Tato's holding this. Tato's coming back. Wow, what a game. Red still has so much gold. Will he be able to find the answer to the push from Tato? I still think that Red has the lead. He has more villagers. He just has less military and the weaker options. It's going to be a struggle, though. I mean, if he doesn't get the relics, Tato's situation just gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Simply because Red's gold is not... He's not going to have that forever. I do think Red needs to tech switch now. He either needs to tech switch or he needs to wait till he has 200 population to fight because he's been doing a lot of small group fighting and he's just going to give tato he's just feeding tato then but you know on water man has he been annoying tato is just attempting to track these fires the galleys or the galleons rather i'd just be a bit more patient if i'm red sure tato has 40 skirmishers but if you have 40 condos then it's an easy win 
disrupting Tato here next to the relics and on stone. This is a crazy game. And a nice demo shot from Tato. Actually, it's not necessary. A bit of a waste, but obviously, there's a lot going on. Capped Ram's also very helpful here, I think. But look what Tato's doing with his light cap. Just going for all the gold units that Red has. And he's going to kill this trebuchet, which wasn't really all that useful for Red. So, sloppy play. Tato now has two relics. There's two more for him to take. And he's getting guard tower. So, Tato has this little section of land. And he will go for guard tower now. And I think he has enough skirmishers. I think he has just enough skirmishers here. The big reason I don't play Migration is because games can turn into this. They stall out. If this was Arabia, Red would have had a big advantage. He would have pushed the advantage home, and he would have been rewarded for it. I think a map like Migration, you're rewarded for being stubborn. And that's exactly what's happening now. Tatsu's being stubborn. Man, heck of a job from him. Still behind in population. That's simply because Red has so many vills. But Red's vills just don't seem to be bringing him much. And I believe a lot of them are idle as well, as you can see. Yeah, these vills are all idle. Red's had about 40, 50 idols for the last 10 minutes. Tato's consistently had idols as well, though. Just not as many. And Tato's KD, it used to be negative. Now it is positive because of all those condo tiers he's been killing. And now Red is going to go into his own light calf, which... Italian's light calf are, are better than the Vikings light calf. Great move, because your opponent's going full skirms and you're losing a lot of gold units unnecessarily. I would say maybe switch to to pikemen, light calf, and capped ramps. No need for condos right now. Just go for light calf. And in fact, full light calf would kill Tato's current composition for sure. No doubt in my mind. Great game, though. I'm not going to cast this whole best of five. If you go to aoezone.net, you can probably find all five games and watch the recordings yourself if you're interested just how the this best of five went. But if this was game one and the best of five, I'm sure the whole best of five was pretty solid. I did see game four. I won't spoil like what the score was at that time, but I stopped by Tata's stream to see it. And it was close. So at least got there. That does imply that uh, both players lost at least one game. And Tato is, is being, well, finally, he's being pushed back slightly. But the guard tower is really gonna help him. He's actually getting arrow slits now as well. Those towers would be more effective. But my friends, for the first time in a long time, Tato is not ahead in military numbers. And oh, Red is, look at this. Red with the light cap. Red with the light cap. He's going into Tato's farming eco. He's going into Tato's Lumber Eco. Red has a lot of food in the bank to span these light cav. Tato also doesn't have a large navy anymore. He has the navy down here, but I don't think that will be enough. Tato got the relics, but will he even be able to hold on to them? Because look at this. Tato's down the 94 villagers, 40 of which are idle. And he simply does not have food to create more light cav and skirmishers when he loses them. And I think he knows now. He needs another woodline secured. He's going to place a town center here. This whole game has just been a dogfight. It has been insanity. And there we go, Red. There we go. He's getting bloodlines. He's getting husbandry. He is in need of the defense upgrades on his units. But I imagine that's probably on the way. Does he have gold here? Yeah, he has... Probably about a thousand gold left there. And he has one relic. Wow, and he's building a castle here. So after Red's little wave there, he kind of... He lost out on numbers. It's almost like he stopped producing. So Tato's at 60 military while Red's at 25. And I can see why Tato said this is probably one of the best migration games he's seen or played in. A red fire, please. Fire with the bombard cannon. Oh, there was an opportunity for him to get a big shot in the skirms. But instead, he will... Yeah, he'll lose that bombard cannon. 
But now Red can make a few Genoese crossbow. If he needs it. I don't think he needs it. He can go for Trebs or Genoese crossbow. That's a lot of skirms from Tato. Full skirms. Skirms on skirms on skirms and a few light calf. Light calf are the appetizer. The main course is skirmishers. Now watch the difference the chain barding upgrade makes here, guys. So currently with with so little pierce armor, the skirmishers are killing the light calf. But chain barding is on the way. Chain barding is only the castle age defense upgrade. But once that is complete, it will make a huge difference. And and then, of course, plate barding will make an even bigger difference. You know, I say that, and these skirmishers are still doing a fantastic job. Red just needs to be more patient. Like, I, I think this is an experience. This might be nerves on his part. He really doesn't need to be throwing units in one at a time. I think if Tato was playing someone around his level and he, he fell into the position that he's in currently, he probably would have called the game. Uh, simply because... Well, he would have been confident the other player could finish him off. But since he's playing red, and no offense to red, Tato knows, okay, I'm the better player. There's only a few avenues I can take to get this victory. Let's let's try. And he has population lead now. He has a population lead now. It is actually working. Believe it or not, these skirmishers and light calf are working out for him. Okay, now the light calf. Now they have all their defense upgrades. So they're fully upgraded, actually. And see the difference? You see how long it takes to kill these light calf with just skirms? This is where red can start pushing back a little bit. The skirmishers have minimum range, so half the group's not even firing. And Tato realizes, okay, these light calf, they have their plate barding armor upgrade. I'm in trouble. Tato, oh! Tato's also in trouble on the starting island. This game is sick. This game is sick. Red's here with Navy. Tato has a lot of eco here. There's now condos in. So I thought Tato was going to win this one for a while, but now I'm really not so sure. Remember, Tato now has four relics. But uh, this is just crazy. This is simply crazy. Tato needs an answer to his opponent's light cap now. And... Maybe that's just going to be more skirms from him. He could consider going pikes, but there's a castle here, and you don't want to be running into castles with pikemen. Tato realizes that he's in trouble on the starting island. He has now fallen behind in population. This is just after Tato had a pretty big lead. He has 116 vills, which is the most he's had this game, but he has 45 of them idle. Military is even. However, Tato's a lot more on land, and Red is prioritizing water again on two sides. And now Red's at 190 population, Tato at 175, and Tato seems like he's behind. Like for sure he's behind. I also saw Red research Cannon Galleon, so I think now he'll start prioritizing water again. He can use water control to take these relics away from Tato. To kill villagers, kill TCs, kill production buildings, which Tato so badly needs. And now I'm thinking yet again, how does Tato come back in this game? Because Red seems to have the water locked down, and he doesn't, he's not really in need of a big push on land. And even, even if he goes for the push on land, he has better light calf. So you would think that since he has plate barding armor and he has bloodlines, he would be better off. And the answer has got to be. Tato's got to go water himself. And these longboats will maybe do that for him. Maybe they will, they will offer enough protection. They can loop around here. They can kill Red's navy. And then they can kill Red's villagers. And Tato will be on the way. This is, <laughs> this is just insane, man. This is truly insane. Tato was right. Populations are dead even. It's deceiving because Tato has had more idols, but man. Tato kills Red's trebuchet and gets out of there. And yeah, I think he'll loop around and just clean up these galleys that are pestering him. And meanwhile, Red is here with the cannon galleon. I mean, isn't this something special, my friends? 
Red's also dangerously close to killing Tato's army here. But here comes Tato. So will it be fast enough? Will it be fast enough for Tato? Let's look at Red's economy again. Yep, he, he has food to make like half. And he's pushing Tato's main group. Tato's below 150 pop now. Tato's navy is actually looping back. And he's looping back because Red is back. Wow. Red is back again. He's the real Slim Shady, guys. So capped rams and like have now on Tato's starting island. This forces Tato into pikemen at home. This is craziness. So that's why Tato's navy is returning, so he can clean all this up. Still no answer to the cannon galleons from red, so Tato will probably lose a castle. And man, have we said that before. But Tato could then lose his monasteries as well, and red could take those relics that used to be his back. Is this the blacksmith Tato's using? Yeah, he's using this blacksmith to upgrade chainmail armor. So that upgrade's going to be lost, which would be a huge... Just a huge loss for Tato. He's going to need that upgrade. You know, I say that, and he might save it. Let's see here. Oh, are you kidding me? 63 HP on the blacksmith, so he's able to get that upgrade. All these little things matter so much in Age of Empires 2. And that upgrade is going to be big for him. He's also mixing in Pike on the mainland. Look how even the populations have been this game. It's insane. 169 versus 166 population. Tato has consistently had more military, though. Wow. And now Red is completely out of gold. So he had two free gold piles. And now the only thing he'll have is some stone to sell. And uh, that one relic. Just insanity. Like, how Tato has made it this long... Is beyond me. I, like, Red has played so well. Somebody's obviously got obviously got to lose this game, and whoever it is, I'll feel bad for. Tato's about to lose his monastery, so that means that Tato will not have an advantage in gold. It will be one to one with the monasteries because there's three in this monastery. Red could always try and snipe these and steal these, then he'd have an advantage in gold income. This fight is looking much better for Red if he commits to it. He's chosen to go back. Does Red even have the gold to spare for a monk? He does not. <laughs> he does not. Maybe, uh... I'm not sure how you do this, because on one hand, you want to take the relic to your safe monastery, which is on your starting base. Or in Red's case, I guess it's back here. But you also need to snatch these as fast as possible. You can't afford to make three monks, so maybe you make one monk, snag this, send it here, drop it. And do that with all three, and then you can take it to your starting islands. But that's that's very complicated when you're expected to fight on all fronts. And now Tato's going to go for Red's castle. So Tato's just kind of switching the location of his fights. One hour and 21 minutes in. Are these guys going to run out of wood on the mainlands? Good God. Yeah, Tato's actually running low on wood. I said that as a joke, but Tato's running out of wood. And let's see how much he has in the bank. He has 1,000. He can't take this. He can't take this yet. And he's almost out here. Obviously, there's nothing on his starting island. Wow, what a match. Oh, Red, don't, don't fight the TC, buddy. Don't fight the TC, buddy. Yeah, this is not good. This hurts to see. The populations are still even after this. But killing this TC doesn't give you all that much. You're just giving Tato a bunch of free kills, and Tato's going to repair the TC anyway, and the TC stays up. Oh, boy. So Red loses 20 population just like that. He is getting control in some ways, but Tato, he's back. He's going back on water, and oh, we just had a Twitch sub. Who was that? Who was that? Wait, let's... Uh, okay, can't replay. Whoever that was, thank you for the sub. I'm, I wasn't expecting the alerts because I'm currently offline on Twitch, but thank you to whoever that was. For the sub. I will 
of course, give all my Twitch subscribers, resubs, all that stuff, shoutouts when I come back, and, and thank you all for the support, which is still, like, very appreciated, as I'll be gone. But I guess now, Tato, he still has the tower here, so that the relics can't be stolen. He has a 40 population lead. Red is struggling with production. He's now going into a lead scrum, which I think should have happened way earlier for him. But hindsight is, of course, 2020. If Tato gets his longboats here, which is what I've been expecting for a while, if he can get his longboats here, I think Red is in trouble because Red would then lose all of these villagers on this island. He would also lose all the archer ranges, which he's trying to produce from. He'd lose the stables. Tata would for sure secure the relics. And now Red just doesn't have the gold. And Tata will clean up all four of those remaining galleons. And maybe... Are we getting closer now? Are we getting closer to the end of this game? It feels like Tata might just be inching it. He's killing his opponent's production buildings. One to one with the relics, but Tato could have four if he focuses there. And Tato has 90 military versus Aramis's 35. And that is the biggest difference in military we've seen this game. What a fight this game has been. What a fight this game has been. Red is going to pile on to another transport. But I think he's in trouble. He could actually run out of wood now. Tato is going to have no wood problems as he's pushed forward. And it's really all just about production, production buildings, map control now as Tato camps these re these uh, buildings. And he'll start trebbing down the one, down the one in the center. Does Tato have it now, guys? Red's pop just, just skyrocketed to 170, but in reality, it's just villagers. He has more vills, but I don't know if, if he's really able to make up the difference in military. This is a fighting game after all. Hey, maybe this is the way? Funny enough, I feel like if he kills Tato's villagers, Tato will just then get more pop space for skirmishers and light cabin pikemen, because he does have wooden food. Viking's economy, very strong. And there we go, Tato gets his relics. It could be the final nail in the coffin for Red. Who, uh, I guess he's going to try and steal Tato's relic now. I mean, he's really tried. I really hope the guy did well in the future games, because obviously, like, this is an incredible result. 99% of people who are watching this video probably never heard of our red player. So it's not as if he's like a top 20 or 30 player. He's just a guy who's, who's good at. at a few water maps and perhaps doesn't get as much recognition as he deserves. Chapter Ram is a sign that Tato will probably finish off this game though. So quick story about Red. Um, I used to play on the HD edition and I used to think I was a pretty big deal. This is back in 2013 and I, I recall being around 2k on HD and Aramis was 2k2 or 2k3 or something uh, which put him in the top 20 I think on HD and so I used to play with him and I, he had mentioned to me, Voobly, uh, I think I then mentioned that I was considering going so I could cast some games, and he said, uh, how good do you think you'll be on Voobly? Like, what do you think your rating will be? And I recall telling him, like, ah, I'll probably be 1800 Voobly. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I think it took me a year and a half to get over 1700 on Voobly, because there's such a big... Uh, it's different now, because so many more people join the client, but at the time... There's about a 500 point difference with your HD rating to your Voobly rating. So he was, of course, he was right up there. Like he was immediately 18, 19, and I believe he's 2K now. But uh, yeah, I, re I remember playing with you, Aramis. If you're listening to this, I remember the good old days, my friends. So thank you for those days and thank you for this game. And, and Red, he's back in the game. He's back in the game. He has 192 population. How is this happening? I tell one story, and the population swings right back into Red's favor. 
Tato has a lot of wood. He does not have that much food. I I can't believe this. I genuinely I told that story because I thought the GG would be coming in, and I figured okay, this that's a good like note to end on, like complimenting Aramis. But no, like <laughs> Red's not dead yet. He is not dead yet. Tato should put all of his gold into siege now. Uh, when you get into this stage and you're relying simply on relic gold income. You want to put your gold into Siege. Either Siege or Champion. So if Tata were to go for Champion, that would work really well here. But I genuinely cannot believe that Red is still holding so much control over this game. Now this is interesting. Now remember I said if if Tata loses Villagers, it'll just give him pop space for military. I think the same thing will happen to Red here. But he will need to add more farms on the mainland. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, Red, maybe he doesn't have a lot of food and wood banked up, so losing these villagers would be a concern. I don't know anymore. Red's trying to sneak stables. He's he's sneaking siege workshops. He just so freaking much, man, is going down in this game. This game could have ended at the one hour mark, and it would have been the best migration I've ever seen. Tato could lose this if he runs out of wood, and obviously that would mean that the game would be quite a long game because he has 3,000 in the bank. But nothing would surprise me now. Tato has no wood on a starting island. Okay, of course, of course, I pan right to wood. He has a little bit of wood here, but uh, not a lot left here. And if Red just controls this area, he can see for himself that Tato's shopping wood there. This is essentially a trash war. So it's really important for Tato that he's able to continue to push. Maybe even deny... Hmm, I wonder if Tato could transport and start raiding this area with some light cap of his own. We've seen Red go for a lot of raids. I've not seen that from Tato, actually. At least not in the same way. He's been using his navy, which has been effective, just not the same. Holy cow. A thousand kills now for Tato, so 1,055 units killed. Migration games normally don't go on this long. They're just relying on the relics, and wow, Red's now going for Hussar. How did he get the gold for that? Will he have the food to create them? Red is going for Hussar. You know, I always forget that Italians even get Hussar. <laughs> but I acted like I knew, didn't I? I acted like I knew what I was talking about. That's that's really what you have to do as a caster. So if anyone's thinking about commentating out there, just act like you had it under control, and for the most part, you're you're good to go. The Dato is sending rams and he's sending trebs, as he should do, and he needs to kill the production buildings of Red. And every production building he kills means that Red will have less military out in the field. Tato still maintains a military lead. Oh, I think that... And my apologies again for the yawn. I believe that that is because of his, his navy here. He has about 15 of those longboats. I think Hussar is a good idea for Red. I just... I think economically he's starting to struggle. He has 40, sorry, 60 farmers, which is actually enough. But Tato is killing some of them, so he needs to keep a close eye on this. Yeah, look, look at this, guys. Tato is here denying wood. He's here denying wood. He's here denying farms. Uh, and then Red's priority is to deny farm space and and wood in the center. This is crazy. This is truly insane. I don't think Red can raid with Hussars, because if he leaves this area with his Hussars, Tato just pushes as he has the Siege Rams, so the Hussars are needed to kill the Siege Rams, they're also needed as a meat shield for his Skirms. This is going to be quite difficult for Tato, because the Skirmishers for Red are on the hills, so they're doing more damage, they're receiving less. And man, are these Hussars so important to this fight! You see Tato pulled back a little bit. Tato has a ridiculous score lead. 
absolutely ridiculous score lead. But score doesn't mean anything. Score doesn't mean anything in war. And Red's pushing back! He doesn't have the relics, but he has the Hussars. And he's going to kill a Treb, he'll kill two, and he's killing a bunch of Tato skirmishers. And Tato is running low on wood, as we expected. So he is on the clock, really. Red still has some wood next to his castle. Um, he still has the wood that he can take away from Tato if he continues this push. And wow, what a push this is! What a push this is! Red has 85 military! Most of which is on land. And Tato's army really can't fight here. In fact, he has to delete the barracks. This is an awful engagement for him. The Hussars are soaking up the damage from Blue's army. And the Skirmisher is just raining down hell from behind. And I think Tato's starting to panic now. Or at least, I would be if I were in his shoes. And now Red's in the position to possibly mix in a few rams and a few siege units. Tato's pikes just can't do anything with all these skirms here. And Hussars are simply stronger because of their mobility and the amount of damage they do. And the amount of damage they take versus skirmishers. I'm speechless. I actually hate it when commentators say that. It's like, obviously you're not speechless. I'm not truly speechless. But I'm getting there. This is a crazy game and now Tat- Oh my god! Oh my god! I came into this game knowing it was going to be amazing, but I didn't expect it to be this amazing. This is sick! Tato's going to transport Lightcap to Red's eco, where Red has no defense for this. So Red has... He has, like, 30-40% of his economy there. At the same time, Tato has 30-40% of his economy here. Which play is going to win? I mean, there's so many little details. Tato's keeping these Hussars out. I've, I've continued to watch for them. So those Hussars are actually not in the field for Red. But Tato, like, he is losing Vils. He's down to 80 villagers, but Red's about to lose some as well. I'm losing my mind. Not only is this one of the best migration games ever, this is possibly one of the best Age of Empires 1v1s I've ever seen, period. There are base traits in Age of Empires 2, and this is a very different base trait. <laughs> oh man, I think we just have to compare resources. Tato has more food than Red. And less wood. But, you know, I say Red doesn't have food. He is producing with his food units, so that is deceiving. My word. And now Red has to build barracks to make a few pikes to defend from this. Tatch is down to 70 bills <laughs> and 140 pop. And Red is as well. My goodness. My goodness. What a game. And I, I think Red has the advantage, simply because the Hussars... Oh, but the Magadel from Tato's here! It misses! We'll get one more shot before it goes down. It will! Oh my god! Look at the population now! Tato takes the score lead. My neighbors are probably downstairs like, I can't wait for this guy to go on his trip. He's so loud over that dumb game. What a game! Now that helps Sal Tato in a massive way. Will it be enough? That Maganel came in clutch. I'm squeaking over here. Tato transports to get just a little bit of wood in the south. And he's sending more <laughs> villagers. Oh my god. And yes, Red just doesn't have the skirm numbers anymore. So the Hussars can't push. I, I, I genuinely believe the game would have ended right there if that Maganel shot wouldn't have uh, hit. If that Maganel would not have connected, I think all of Tato's pikes die, Red has enough Hussars, and then Tato loses everything here. Or maybe not everything, like I'm, I'm possibly exaggerating a bit, but he would have lost a lot more. Red would have certainly kept the hill. And he could have followed it up with a capped ram to kill things, I mean, just so many possibilities. And you just, you have to think now, after receiving that blow, in game one of the finals versus a player like Tato, that that Red has got to be thinking, you're kidding me, right? Like he, he was coming so close, and now he has to, to add more villagers. And, and I location that is not ideal. And he's thinking, man, this guy is so good. 
and he is. And Tato doesn't know it yet because he doesn't see the army. He could fight this now, and I believe he could win this fight. Because somehow, some way, Tato's back up to 90 military, 160 plus population, and Red's at mid 130s. <laughs> and also, about a dozen hussars are still stuck in that stable. Because of a brilliant quick wall from Tato and brilliant repairs from him to keep those units trapped in there. And that, that stable has been there for a long time. It's been there for 30, 40 minutes now. Okay. Think if Tato pushes up this hill, he takes the game. And he's here, uh, but he's he's playing this safe. He does not want to lose army numbers like Red did. So every little kill here is a plus form. He'll kill villagers. And I think, wait for the siege rams. Wait for the siege rams. Just kill production buildings, and eventually Red just can't make any more military. Big fight, though. Tato fighting up the hill. But he's not fighting a lot of pikemen at the start of this engagement, so... He's killed quite a few skirms from Aramis. And that gives Tato a 50 population lead. as a 50 military lead. And he also gets his own pikemen up the hill. More light cap on the way. If he gets the skirms in there, I think Tato can do this. But he's going to leave the hill for now. He's going to be more patient. And I think that's a good safe decision. You don't want to throw your lead here. Tato's... He's in the one of the strongest positions he's been in in this game. And I think champions could finish it off for him. I do. I, I I hate to call it because I've done so so many times in this game. But surely, surely champion would would destroy red. There's no counter to that in his army. Tatsu just needs like 20 of them with the army he has. And then... It's off to game two in this best of five. <laughs> um, you know, I told you I saw game four. So, I I don't... I guess I already did spoil. I know that Aramis got at least one win because game four came up and I believe Tato's victory might be on the way here. Maybe when I return from my trip, if you guys would like to see more of the, that, uh, that final, maybe the entirety of it, I could cast it for you. I can promise you that no game will be as good as this one. The strategies might be different, civs might be different, but no game will be as good as this one. This is just special, and, and Red is still holding on for dear life. Like, can you imagine the amount of clicking, the amount of focus? This is just exhausting to look at at times. But Tato, the freak of nature that he is in this game, he has, uh, he's done a fantastic job to hold on. That one Maganella shot is still unbelievable to me. And I think now, with Red running low on resources, even before seeing... Okay, now he sees the champion. 110 pop. He's fighting with Vils versus the Ram. Like Kevin is eco, I think that this is where I would start thinking about calling the GG. Possibly because it's a tournament final, he'll fight a little bit longer. Just in case Tato slips up. But I don't see how Tato can slip up now. And I feel like... It is simply just a matter of time. And there's the GG. Uh, Tatsu says, good game, well played. And that is an understatement. That is... If, if Tatsu was an honest man, he would say, good game, very, 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 very well played, Red. Uh, that just sums it up. I can't say anything more than that. I can't review this game. Normally, I can go to three or four talking points... Say, hey, remember when this happened at this minute? Remember when this happened at this minute? Well, this is how it affected the game. This game was just insanity from virtually start to finish. So. Tato gets the victory. Well played, Aramis. That is the best migration. One of the best games I've ever seen in Age of Empires 2. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a text message which had relatively bad news, so I'm going to just skip that. Skip thinking about that for now. Let's go to the achievements. We have the military stats. 1,500, 1,500 units killed for Tato. 1,300 for Aramis. Uh, the economy stats, wow, that's, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Aramis had more food, significantly more food, and he had significantly more wood. Uh, and the gold, oh my god! The gold as well. 
<laughs> that I didn't expect there to be that big of a gold difference. What was the relic gold like? I guess Aramis had about 4,000. Okay. That that game has just left me mind blown. I think that I have to get back into this and, and discuss some of the situations, despite the fact I said I can't possibly do it. I'll try. Um, you know, there were multiple instances where they had to shift focus. So I guess the best way to sum it up would be there were times where water control was very helpful and there was times where water control was a waste. So, so for example, Tato, he, he got to a stage where he was doing really well with his elite longboats, but then blue already had mainland control. And so, or sorry, then red already had mainland's control. So the Navy didn't really help him. So then Tata would have to focus on land and then red would think, okay, maybe I can take an advantage on water. And he did that multiple times with the transports and killing Tata's eco. And then when Tata would stabilize there, then Tata would push back and you can see the longboats are here. I mean, it was just a, a big game of, of shifting focus. And this, this eight game of Age of Empires 2 is just so perfect. I mean, to be able to, to see games day after day that are different in so many different ways is fantastic. And I, I think that these guys, like, my hats go off to these two players because I'm here to talk about it. You guys can probably appreciate the strategy after it's explained and after a long game like that. But, um... The potential of Age of Empires 2, the potential greatness of Age of Empires 2 is only shown, we only see it because we have fantastic players. Because I can guarantee you, if you're watching their point of view, you're probably getting dizzy watching that game. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, please leave a like. As I said, I am away from streaming for about 8 or 9 days. I'll make sure to let you guys know when I'll be back, but... um. Thank you guys very much for watching the content. I will be paying attention to YouTube con uh, comments and look forward to the next couple videos, guys. I have quite a lot of awesome content planned for the next week and a half.